Tuesday, November 29th, on 465, headed to uh, Indy International, getting ready to hop a flight to Atlanta, then on to NASA, then on to San Salvador Island in the Bahamas. Gonna be there for a little over a week, doing scientific research, and we're gonna be looking into the recent hurricane that went through. Uh, Hurricane Joaquin went, uh, hit the island on October 2nd. The eye passed directly offshore and uh, really devastated the island. Their uh, power went out, it's still kind of sporadic. Uh, trees down, buildings demolished. The works that would come along with a high category hurricane such as Joaquin. So we're gonna go do some investigative research on the island, how it's held up, how they've responded, and uh, what their plans are for the future, and how they can help prevent this damage from happening in the end. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a week and a half in the Bahamas in the, 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 in the middle of winter. It's going to be a good time. It's a beautiful sunshine today. I feel the sun, feel the sun. It's a beautiful sunshine today. I feel the sun, feel the sun. The sun is slowly going. Leaving the island, sun is leaving the island. What are we doing? We're getting ready to fly to San Salvador on a Bahamas Air to have with Dash 8. Flying out of Nassau. The sun, the sun, the sun, well, it's almost Always winter here, most of the time, and, and also summertime, very little summertime, very, 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 very little, very little summertime. On the island, on the island, San Salvador. On this island, this lovely island, this island. Christopher Columbus came to this island 1492. And I get to this. Uh, we just landed in Cobra 2, San Salvador, awaiting instructions on what to do next. Just kind of hanging out, waiting for a shuttle, I think. For the duration of our time on the island, we will be staying at the Gerace Research Center alongside our colleagues from Ball State University. Dr. Lee Floria leads the Tropical Island Environments class at Ball State, and we had the fantastic opportunity to be a part of his group. Welcome to San Salvador. Uh, this is the Gerace Research Center. It is the location that we bring classes to on this island. We are located in Graham's Harbor on the northern end of the island. Behind me you see North Point, Cut Key, Cato Key, and White Key, and the waves that are crashing over the barrier reef on this isolated carbonate platform in the North Atlantic Ocean. This is an isolated island, yet it is an island where students have been coming for almost 40 years to learn about archaeology, plant biology, marine biology, and of course, my passion, geology. We bring students in part to experience another country. We are in the country of the Bahamas. It is like the U.S. in some ways, but very different in others. And so this is in many cases our students' first exposure to other cultures and other peoples. So in addition to taking students 
out into what one might expect, which is the coral reefs and the lagoons to learn about depositional environments of sediments that create these islands. We also take students into the interior so that they can experience the environment in which people live on these islands where they are strapped for natural resources, including fresh water. So we learn quite a bit about the cycle of life here from the beginning of the rock through the people who inhabit this island and the subsystems that they scrape away from the bare surface of the island. So the students experience all of this over the course of a week on the interior and in offshore on the island. They meet locals, they talk to people, they learn about their life, and in such way they grow as people. After arriving on the island, we went to go get the local scoop on Hurricane Joaquin by interviewing members of the Race Research Center, as well as members from the capital city of San Salvador, Coburn Town. It's the first time I've ever been in a hurricane here on San Salvador, yes. I have experienced hurricanes in Florida, um, much milder. This was a Category 4 hurricane. And I live on the beachfront, seaside. <laughs> so that was pretty dramatic for us. Seaside hurricane. Everybody tends to move inland, but we decided to, to stay at home. I weathered it at home. I, I, I stayed at home this, 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 this time. The first, the first hurricane when we came down, we stayed up at the field station actually. And um, it, was, it, was, it wasn't too bad, but um, you know, my house was fine, so I decided to ride out the, this one at home. I was right here at the research center. Um, the research center is actually a hurricane shelter. So I was here sheltering along with a lot of our staff as well as the official hurricane shelter that we have in one of our buildings. So there was a lot of local people sheltering here as well. And uh, it came sort of suddenly. You know, we weren't expecting, you know, it is a hurricane season, but we didn't expect for it to come and hit us like it did. It started that Wednesday. We um, got the report that it was coming. And so um, our first thing was to start putting things away, putting on the wooden shutters. And so by Wednesday afternoon, we had all that done. And Wednesday evening, Thursday, Friday, we were inside all day until Saturday morning. We rent this space and um, we have two apartments upstairs and we lost a portion of the roof of, of, of this side. So of course, when we lost the roof, then we had water, water come down inside the store. So we had uh, quite a bit of damage. Um, we lost a lot of product. Uh, you know, took some cleaning up, and then of course the power, power was out for uh, a few weeks uh, after the storm. So you know, we just had to improvise, uh, get some generators and so forth, and, and uh, you know, tried to make it work. It was so long. Um, the others you hadn't noticed, and it, um, you had preparation time. You know a day or two before, whereby you, you know, you got things in place, but this one, because it developed so close to us, and then went down and came back up, it was like upon us for three days, it was really bad. Um, Joaquin was a particularly slow moving storm, so we were in hurricane winds for a very long period of time. Um, so the second half of the storm was after dark, so it was very dark and scary and um, there's a lot of noises that really high winds make. Um, it literally sounded like you were in a tunnel with a train going through it for five or six hours straight. So yeah, it was a little unnerving. And of course it did some damage. As you would see in the back of the, the front of the church, the whole window was blown out, all right? And up in the house, of course, the shingles taken off, blown off. And it was a very strong wind, very strong wind. While we up there, we, were, we live upstairs in the attic, and it feels like the whole roof was just, you know, for our first experience, you know, and so uh, it was sort of not dramatic, but quite interesting.
Well, at the beginning of the storm, we had maybe 40 people sheltering here. Um, some staff over here, and then they had about 30 people sheltering in the public shelter. During the eye of the hurricane, a lot of people left where they had been sheltering because it had been compromised or it had become dangerous or the storm was just worse than they expected. So by the end of the storm in the shelter, we had well over 100 people on campus. Um, during the first half of the hurricane, when we came out, um, as, as we said, you know, it went down past San Salvador. That part was pretty good. There were no damages. Everything was still standing, you know, good. And um, that was Friday. And then Friday afternoon, and then we had the eye that passed over that lasted for three hours. And it was extremely flat, calm, and hot. I mean, hotter than what it is right now when the eye was passing over. And then as it turned and came back the other way, then, as I said, I live right on the beach. So then you start seeing the difference in the water start, you know, bubbling, I call it, and you know, wind picking up and everything. The rain was coming, instead of coming down like this, it was coming out slant. After getting the accounts of the damage, we went out on the Queens Highway to the southern end of the island where we saw where a road had been completely washed out. We also traveled to the north end of the island view the damage at government docks, a local meeting spot for festivals such as Confest. We are in the Moon Tower, which is an old uh, radar station from back when the research center was a naval base. Uh, now it's just a free for all. You climb up there, you can look out over Graham's Harbor. You can see the research center at North Point, and then you can also uh, look down on the government docks area, which is uh, where there was a lot of damage. North Point at Graham's Harbor. There's a path leading up here to the point. Actually, on the other side, just past the points, Cut Key, where the peninsula had actually been cut, forming an extra island. Alright, we're out here at North Point. Over here, we got the Atlantic Ocean. Nothing there all the way to Africa. The water is mighty and ferocious, beating against the shoreline. to cut this giant swath in this peninsula here, slowly eroding away at the rock. It and the winds come roaring through here to take it out every day. But this area right here, that was hurricane damage. Helping accelerate the geologic time it's gonna to take to turn that part of the peninsula into its own island like it did for Cut Key. Despite damage, the island is getting better due to the efforts from domestic groups as well as international ones visiting the GRC. Every bit helps, all the way down to mending fences and clearing paths. You know, interestingly, um, Club Med is one of the major um, uh, properties on the, on the island and it provides employment for quite a bit of people. Um, during the time the storm hit, Club Med was actually closed uh, for renovation, which is something that they do every year. Um, usually once the, cl the Club Med closes, we start to see a decline in business up until the time they reopen. But we've kind of have just the opposite. Uh, because of the storm, we've had a lot of people come into the island to work and so forth. Uh, so business has actually picked up uh, quite a bit uh, uh, since since the storm. As far as being the Red Cross representative of the island, it, it 
put into action a lot more delivery pickup aids helping somebody um, with assistance with whatever they needed and of course pestering the Jury's Research Center because every time we needed to, tr to transport some goods we went to them so they went with me often and we were able to store a lot of our goods here um, until we were able to distribute them. There were a lot of effects from the storm. Um, um, probably the most immediate was that we had no electricity um, so our ability to pump water um, was reduced so we had all of these people here. Some of them could not go home. They had to stay sheltering here. Um, so we had people staying here with no electricity, limited water supply, um, food we had plenty of because we were losing our freezers without electricity. So we had to go ahead and use the food that was in the freezers. A lot of it we donated to the public shelter so that they could feed the people that were there. Um, and then we were cooking over open fires out in the common area, so. When we got up that Saturday morning, pools were down, wires were down, you know. It, but the good thing about it, it became a real community time where everybody came out once, you know, we got the okay. Everybody came out, we were walking around from house to house and everybody was just hugging each other and saying, you're okay, you know. And, you know, we're seeing the damages to the houses, but we're just more concerned about people at that point. And nobody had any scratches, any bruises, anything. Yes, I've seen so many benefits. Like I said, we have been having donations that have been, sometimes, you know, the Bible says that God will give you, tell you don't have room enough to receive. But we practically was to that spot where we didn't have room enough to receive. But we've had clothing, we've had food supplies, a whole lot of water and like I said the building supplies and I think even if you drive around you'll still see some building supplies that are on the containers from the trailers that are still waiting to be issued to persons. Well I think in relation to the storms I think what the storm has done um, it has really uh, shaken a lot of people up. Um, there was a lot of shoddy construction a lot of um, uh, uh, mediocre work that was done to a lot of the homes um, in the past but I think since the storm, we've had a lot of materials come in and uh, people are taking steps now to do it, do it right rather than just trying to patch it, you know. So I think that that has um, really um, um, impacted the island. Uh, a lot of people were displaced because of the storm and um, I, I think it just kind of woke a lot of people up to, as to the, the real um, serious threat of a storm. I think in, in many years past, what has happened was we've had storms and people just took them lightly. But I think now they, they are beginning to take the storms a lot more seriously and, and take the necessary precautions um, um, once they hear that the storm is approaching. Um, long term, I don't think it's really going to impact us um, other than in the positive. We have had some positive effect from it, as in we found ourselves unprepared, like uh, generator power and, and so on. So we now have a generator that we're ready to hook up and it will be kind of a standby generator that could provide electricity for most of the functionality here. Um, the refrigeration we unfortunately lost during the storm, um, but that was refrigeration that was original Navy built, so we're talking from like 1960, and it was something that we were considering upgrading anyways. So that's another positive, we now have better refrigeration. Of course, the downside is that we have spent, um, by the time we get the water tanks prepared, um, we've spent over $100,000 and that was um, a big hit to our reserve funds. So financially, it'll take us a few years to recover, but uh, other than that, long term, there shouldn't be any impact. Um, some of the parcels that we received, I remember one little girl, she sent a little letter and she said, these are my precious toys and I really love them. But because you had so much damage and my mom said you guys may need some help, I'm sharing them with you. Please take good care of them. So it was things like that that really, really touched your heart to know that persons were out there just willing to share what they had and what they hold as prized possessions to share with us. And it was, it was just, you know, everybody giving thanks to say, well, hey, material things can be replaced, but thank God there were no loss of lives. Nobody got a broken arm or leg or anything. So that, that Saturday morning, we really saw a community, you know, just really come together and show the support and encouragement for each other, even through all the devastation. I thank the Lord that we are here. And like I said, no life has been lost. A lot of homes has been damaged. 
and a lot of things may have been temporarily misplaced, but we are alive, so I'm happy for that. No, again, if I may say so, the Lord works in mysterious ways. A lot of the persons whose homes were damaged, they now have something better than what they had as a result of that, because people came and assist and things came in from elsewhere to assist. You know, so we have to be grateful for that, you know. I, I, I jokingly say it now because God has used walking to walk in and destroy some stuff so that now we can be able to get rebuilt. Because like I said, we had we have we still have clothes that's in storage at the social service department that have been received and like I said we have more stuff to collect. And they told us there's more stuff in the U.S., but it's, the boat only brings so much at a time. So there's just so much in abundance that we've been receiving. And, then, and I'm just hoping that persons will be grateful, you know. Our trip to San Salvador was fantastic. We got to a snorkel, cave. We were able to talk to the locals and learn about their island. Best of all, we helped aid in its development and so that it may flourish again in the future and the aftermath of Hurricane Joaquin. San Salvador always welcome you to the shore, to the shore, to the shore, to the shore. Your friend to come back, come back. Bring along with you some more of your friends to the island.